Central Tire Inflation, or CTI, are terms used to identify mechanical systems installed on vehicles that allow the driver to adjust radial tire pressure while the vehicle is in motion. These systems also monitor tire pressures while the vehicle is running and automatically maintain tire pressures at levels set by the driver. The application of CTI technology allows the driver to optimize vehicle performance on specific road surfaces by managing the interaction between the tires and the road. The key to applying CTI technology is tire deflection. Technically, tire deflection is the change in tire section height from the freestanding height to the loaded height. This is an illustration of a tire with no load on it. On the right is a view of the same tire as it's deflected when the load is applied. Greater tire deflection results in a larger tire footprint on the road surface. As tire pressure is decreased, the footprint increases in length. The width remains essentially the same because the steel belts around the perimeter of radial tires do not change length as deflection increases. On a soft surface, this longer footprint reduces stress applied to road surfaces, improves traction, and reduces washboarding. The road's ability to carry loads increases with the increased length of the footprint resting on the surface. Increasing the footprint length reduces the amount the drive wheel slips and increases vehicle mobility. As the size of the footprint increases, so does the tire's ability to roll over the road exterior and not settle into the road surface. This results in a decrease in rolling resistance on unpaved roads, an important plus in vehicle performance. Due to the characteristically flexible sidewall design and belt construction of today's radial tires, CTI can be used to optimize the interaction between the tires and the road surface, particularly in low-speed applications. The Forest Service does not set the tire pressures. The goal is to manage tire deflection to benefit both the vehicle and the road within the published standards established by the Tire Industries Tire and Rim Association. Operating outside these standards on national forest roads must be approved by the Forest Service and the tire manufacturer. A tire is a pneumatic spring. Reducing tire pressure changes the spring rate. This reduction in spring rate reduces the shock energy normally transferred to the vehicle suspension system and the road. In 1983, the Forest Service began a study of the effects of tire pressure on the costs of transporting forest products from the national forests. The study includes not only the costs associated with actual hauling of forest products, but also includes cost analysis of constructing and maintaining the total transportation system. This study indicated that the use of radial tires at reduced tire inflation pressures resulted in significant benefits to the timber purchaser, the vehicle owner, the driver, and the Forest Service. To quantify the benefits of CTI for the forest products transportation industry, a two-part program was begun. First, a series of structured tests were conducted on test courses where variables can be controlled and quantified results were documented. Second, field operational tests were conducted to demonstrate the technology and subjectively evaluate the effectiveness of CTI under actual field conditions. The first phase of the structured test program was conducted at the Nevada Automotive Test Center in cooperation with the Rubber Manufacturers Association. The tests were conducted to verify the concept that radial tires could be safely operated at reduced tire pressure under varying road, speed, and load conditions. Two 18-wheel log trucks with different tire pressures were run on parallel lanes on a course that featured 11 different test sections. Included were flat and outslope S-curves, pothole and washboard sections, double penetration chip seal, asphalt, and severe rock course sections. 
More than 6,400 passes over the closed loop course were made under controlled conditions. These tests resulted in the industry's Tire and Rim Association issuing an interim standard for Forest Service use when conducting demonstrations. This standard is a design guide that defines reduced inflation, limits tests to tubeless radial tires, and restricts operation to reduced speeds while off-highway. A separate structured test was conducted at the Waterways Experiment Station, Vicksburg, Mississippi, in cooperation with the Corps of Engineers and the Federal Highway Administration. The primary effort at the Waterways Experiment Station was to quantify the effect of tire pressure and deflection on road surface deterioration and design requirements. Additional measurements were made of truck component and tire parameters to correlate information obtained at Vicksburg with other test data from the NATC tests and field operational tests. Again, the test program consisted of running two 18-wheel logging trucks over parallel lanes. One truck operated with high tire pressure, the other operated with low tire pressure. The truck with higher tire pressures soon created washboarding and damaged the road surface, while the truck with lower tire pressures significantly reduced surface damage and washboarding never occurred. The truck with high tire pressure made 1,104 passes over an asphalt section with eight inches of aggregate base. The low pressure truck was able to make 2,076 passes over an identical road section before failure occurred. On a gravel surface, the high pressure truck made only 600 passes before the surface failed, while the low pressure truck made 970 passes without failure. Results like these clearly demonstrate the ability to reduce road surface thickness while maintaining the same volume of traffic. The cost of the National Forest Transportation System is very significant, and the agency is always looking for opportunities to reduce costs. Tests designed to document road maintenance differences have also been conducted by the Forest Service Engineering Research Laboratory in Auburn, Alabama. These tests showed that loaded log trucks with tires at 100 PSI damaged forest roads, and trucks with lowered tire pressures did not. In southeastern Oklahoma, Weyerhaeuser Company operated the first CTI system on an 18-wheel log truck. The lower tire pressure resulted in less tire damage with the same ride characteristics. Additional operational field tests have been conducted with the Mack Truck Corporation in Alabama. On the prong flight timber sale on the Sayuslaw National Forest in Oregon, on the Tonkan timber sale in the Tongass National Forest in Alaska, and the Shawamagon National Forest in northeastern Wisconsin, and various other locations. Under certain conditions, air stations and valve stem deflators are a CTI hardware option. Tire mounted relief valves on each axle end are used to reduce tire pressure for off-highway conditions, and tires are reinflated at an airing station for highway conditions. CTI systems utilize a vehicle's air compressor and mechanical hardware of various types to adjust pressure and deflection in individual tires. External CTI systems employ airlines and rotating valves connected externally to tire inflation valves. Internal CTI systems integrate the transmission of air through axles and in some cases through the wheel rims. Although the availability of commercial CTI systems in the United States is presently limited, this technology has been widely used in other parts of the world for more than 40 years, particularly in the Soviet bloc countries Europe and Africa. The roads in some of these areas of the world are similar to the 270,000 miles of local minimum standard roads in the Forest Service. However, several U.S. manufacturers have developed internal CTI systems for military application and are interested in developing new markets for their systems. The new military emphasis on increased mobility and rapid deployment has heightened the military use of CTI technology. 
technology that provides driver dashboard controls, increases or decreases tire pressure to suit the terrain condition, and maintains desired tire pressures all while in motion. With lower pressure, the ground contact area of each tire lengthens, resulting in a bigger footprint, better traction, and superior mobility. As time passes, the original equipment and retrofit market bases for CTI equipment will be further established and expanded. Adequate, cost-effective commercial systems are in their infancy and will be further developed by industry before this technology spreads and the desired level of benefits are available. It is also essential that the benefits and opportunities to be derived from prudent application of CTI technology be communicated beyond forest service managers to contractors, cooperators, other resource management agencies, and other interested public and private parties. For the timber sale purchaser, CTI can provide longer hauling seasons without additional surfacing. Several operational tests show that hauling can be permitted using lower tire pressures under wet road conditions that would normally prohibit hauling. In other tests, road maintenance was dramatically reduced. Road surfacing requirements were also reduced and less aggregate was lost. Washboarding from other vehicles was healed or smoothed out. And haul costs and lost time required for routine road maintenance were substantially lowered. The concept is sound. The testing accomplished to date indicates that significant cost can be avoided in road construction and maintenance and vehicle operation by using variable tire pressures. Potential big winners in the CTI equation are the vehicle owners. Here, benefits include fewer shutdowns, increased mobility, reduced vehicle operating costs, such as tire replacement and lower overall repair bills. The structured NATC test indicates that truck maintenance and repair costs were eight times higher when using highway pressures on very rough roads. Test results on better roads are less dramatic, but still significant. Instrument readings showed up to 10 times more dynamic loading on some truck components. Other parts experienced impacts two to three times higher at conventional tire pressures. There was a two gear difference between tires at high pressures versus tires with low pressure, pulling through a section of road nearly impassable. Less tire wear occurred in a structured test. In field tests, tire wear varied according to local conditions and routes, and differences in wear rates could not be detected. There were less punctures over the severe test course at NATC, less tire cuts and chunk outs. In an Alabama demonstration, short wood or bobtail trucks operated at three tire pressures. The high tire pressure trucks did extensive damage to several road sections. In one case, the driver got stuck, then lowered his tire pressure and drove away. The low pressure section was in as good condition at the end of the test as it was at the start. Proper application of CTI technology provides better traction on low standard roads, frozen roads, and adverse grades. There will be fewer rocks stuck between the duels, fewer flats and tire failures. Ride comfort for the driver was greatly improved with lower tire pressure. The potential to reduce driver fatigue and medical problems exists. The ride is improved and handling characteristics are similar after an initial adjustment period. Improved driver comfort is an important benefit of CTI application. Here's an example of the driver bounce on a soft surface road with high tire pressure. On the right, here's the driver bounce with reduced tire pressures. Same road, same vehicle, same load and speed. The Forest Service feels so strongly about the overall benefits of CTI that a plan has been approved called Operation Bigfoot. Through this plan, the agency is investing funds toward the application of central tire inflation. CTI installation is encouraged for Forest Service trucks over 24,000 pounds GVW that will operate under conditions where CTI would be beneficial. Original equipment CTI systems were specified for Forest Service trucks with air brakes procured for delivery in fiscal 1990 and beyond. 
Forest Service trucks equipped with air brakes are being retrofitted with CTI systems if at least one half of their operating life remains. The Forest Service will use timber sale appraisal allowances and special contract provisions to implement CTI applications on appropriate sales. Timber sale purchasers who wish to implement CTI on particular sales may do so by agreement with the Forest Service. The Technology Application Plan, Operation Bigfoot, is intended to provide guidelines for applying CTI and to stimulate its application as soon as practical. Your national forest has a regional CTI coordinator assigned to implement this plan. See this person for details about making this technology work for you. Central tire inflation, another opportunity for cost-effective, environmentally sensitive resource management. Caring for the land, serving people.